So guys, as you know, I'm a big fan of uh, a lot of anime, so is Brandon. But, you know, there's one anime I know that neither of you have watched. And I want to know what, what, you, what you think of the plot is. So in about, you, you have a space of a minute, and I want each of you to tell me the plot of Go One Piece. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, why are you firing that earth, man? <laughs> right, let's just... Right. One Piece. A load of pirates setting out to find the One Piece so Luffy or someone else can become the Pirate King. And they go on a long adventure to try and find the One Piece. And because, obviously, it's a shonen, there's loads of filler, and they eventually still can't find the One Piece. There you go. <laughs> Come on, Chris. What do you think it's, think it's about? Okay. Uh, I know Booger Rules, so I think it is <laughs> about... Uh, dragging on this series as long as humanly possible to keep people watching and get every single penny out of them until they only have one piece of money left. <laughs> I, I see what else. you did there. Uh, Dan, tell us. What is the plot of One Piece? I've got to read it to find and out. Sh- oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> no. I've got to say, it could go for some time. Is it worth me popping the kettle on while you have it? <laughs> nah. Nah. Just a group of uh, friends on a great adventure. And it's and it's just fantastic. So, this podcast, then? Exactly. I was say, you could just narrow that down to almost any, <laughs> any shonen yeah. anime out there. <laughs> <laughs> or even, like, Marvel stuff, you know? You know, what's the Avengers about? You know, just a group of guys. On an adventure, having a good time. No, I, I think the best way I can describe One Piece without even going into too much is it starts off with a rubber man who has a very tragic backstory, but then meets a whole lot of great friends, and then eventually world cataclysmic events occur that threaten everyone on the planet, trying to find on the, planet. the One Piece. On the planet, not just the ocean, but the whole planet. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm still not going to watch it for a long time. No. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't commit to long stuff like that. Like Gintama Enough was a nice long series, but that's a long series which I could just keep going back to. Whereas One Piece, it's it's just so. How long is it now? It's over 800 episodes, isn't it? I'm. Um, it's uh, on Friday. Is 1,020. It's chapter 1020. Jesus Christ. Gotta love it. (laughs) That's that's, that's bonkers. That's absolutely bonkers. So when you say rubber man, do you mean a rubber man as in a stretch Armstrong? Or (laughs) someone who goes around and rubs out people's paperwork? Or someone who sells condoms? (laughs) Uh, Luffy has the powers of rubber, so he's kind of like... Mr. Fantastic, Mr. Fantastic uh, slash uh, Mrs. Incredible. Yeah, pretty much. Plagiarized man. <laughs> well, he ca- he was probably Mr. Fantastic, but not uh, Miss Incredible. Mrs. Incredible. It's a shame. I I like to think uh, uh, Luffy, I believe is his name. Yes. Is the uh, the child of Mrs. Mr. Fantastic and Mrs. Incredible. Maybe in that fan fiction. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, oh. I can see a doujin from that. Oh dear. Here we go. <laughs> you know it exists on the internet somewhere. Somebody's Rule 44 or whatever it is. 34. 34. Yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it ended in a 4. Yeah. Stop pretending you don't want to know what it is. <laughs> Fuck it. <anymore. laughs> So, welcome to Victory Achieved Podcast. We're now on episode six, and I'm here. It. Hmm? I was just going to say, it's like six. It's actually episode six. We've been doing this for, what, 12 weeks? It's ridiculous. Jesus, yep. man. Yeah. I like you know what else comes in six? Eggs. Eggs <laughs> come in six. They do. Half a dozen. And like always, I'm here with Brandon and Chris. Hello, hello. Yellow. 
I'm done. Like always. <laughs> <laughs> always done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so, I've actually seen Black Widow. I don't know if you, any of you two I have. I have also seen it. Oh, really? And I have yes, not. I have ah. actually seen a film. Oh. Did you, <laughs> did you go to cinema or did you watch yeah, it? Yeah, I went, I went to cinema oh. to watch it. You, you had to. You had to. Like, you couldn't just, like, stream it off Disney Plus. And it's, it's, also, it's not like anyone could do that. You have to also, get the full experience. And it's also, like, double the price. Yeah. I can just see Chris just shaking his head like, nope. <laughs> what? Paying for a service I already pay for? Piss off. Why is this still a thing? It's like, Stop yeah, doing... I pay for Disney Plus, and now I'm going to pay double for the film. It yeah, makes I so really don't know that. No chance. Uh, from what I understand, it will be on the service on October anyway. So just yeah. Hold on for a couple of months. Are you? Will you try and see it in the cinema, Chris? I'm, I'm gonna try, but I've got to wait for the opportunity to arise. I mm. may take a break in streaming in a couple of days to sort of get a few things done before, I, like possibly go back to work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a shock to the system. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did a voluntary shift down at a beer festival this weekend. So oh yes. I thought I'd uh, dust off my work clothes, see if I can remember how my limbs worked. <laughs> yeah. Put it this way: on a Saturday night, I was in bed for half twelve, completely sober. What the hell? <laughs> Body That's wasn't ready. That's been me for uh, weeks. I've not got drunk since April. But that's a story for for uh, another time. I say I can't remember the last time I've got into a level. I really can't. Yeah, but uh, oh. Brandon, what did you? Obviously, we can't talk too much spoilers because I don't want to spoil it for Chris. Don't you but, dare! <laughs> uh, but did what did you think of it? Uh, personally, I I think it was okay. It's I would say it's on the upper end of the Marvel films, but I'd still say it was pretty okay. The ending, though, as for someone who has not seen many Marvel films and is slowly catching up. It really confused me, but obviously I then got spoiled slightly by the people I was with. But I thought the ending was quite interesting. But uh, and I will give, I'll give credit that it, it does a really great thing for female protagonists. I 100% like, support like, raising the profile of female protagonists. That was absolutely brilliant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, did you, you did watch the post credit scene. Yes, that's what I was on about. Oh, yeah, I thought that when you said you were confused, I assumed it was the post credit scene. Yes. Then, then anything else. But, yes, yes. Okay, well, um, yeah, I, I don't want to say anything more. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah. had like similar thoughts. My opinion of the film prior to watching it, of what it is, has not changed since watching it. But I was kind of more pleasantly surprised than anything but I still I know where I'd rank it on the Marvel films and I kind of expected it to be where where I, I would place it and the film was exactly what I expected but I enjoyed it yeah I have to agree with you there for what you said like I did I didn't like I set myself a certain level of expectations and you know, it didn't. It didn't smash my expectations. It just sort of, you know, was just there. My my expectations were met, and I always, I, I'm not. I kind of, they kind of were low, but not like, not like, oh, this is going to be terrible. But they were, like, I see so you got the next couple Marvel films coming out later this year, and I, well, I don't know about Eternals, but the next two, I've got a higher. Uh, bar for them than I did for Black Widow. I don't even know what the other ones upcoming are, to be fair with you. They are Shang-Chi, uh, The Eternals, and Spider-Man. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll openly admit, when I saw... Um, I actually saw Age of Ultron a couple of weeks ago as well. But I, was, I, had to, I think I had to skip a couple to reach Age of Ultron because we have to... I think we were watching it prior to getting ready for Black Widow, just to get myself to somewhat of a state of affairs for the for the storyline. And that was my first time actually seeing anything to do with Spider Man. And because I've because I've always been used to you know like the PS2 games Spider Man. Wait 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 wait. 
it, it, Spider-Man's not in Age of Ultron. Is he? No, is he Civil not, War. or is it the one after? I mean, Civil War. Civil War is it? Civil War. That's oh, what I was okay. on about. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's like, just what? me. Be- I was gonna say, yeah, that's just me being an idiot. That's okay. But, but yeah, but that's as far as I've gotten in terms of Spider-Man lore. It's, uh, it's only from what I've known for the PlayStation Two games. Okay. So I went. Uh, so I've sort of had this stigma against Spider-Man. I think maybe just because of the experiences of the PS2 games, but it's, it's, it's quite pleasant actually. In Civil War. Spider-Man. Like, just Spider-Man. getting to know Spider-Man. Spider-Man's my favourite Marvel character, so uh, I, re- I really like Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Hmm. So. Yeah, he does a good job, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. I'll, I'll give him credit. He, he, like, he gives off, it's a very unique personality yeah. for Spider-Man. Very, very unique. Yeah. I've uh, I've got the... Well, it's in like a, a big graphic novel, but I've got the original Spider-Man comic in a... And I've also got... Uh, I've got a t-shirt with it, with that, with the front cover on as well. And it's that whole, the original Spider-Man comic is done completely in the first Tobey Maguire film. Okay. Do you have the original Spider-Man suit? That would be more interesting. I have the Far From Home, uh, not Far From Home, the um, Homecoming suit as a morph suit. Yeah. There is oh, a... Oh, not the real one. <laughs> yeah, there is a... There is, when I first went to MCM and Comic-Con, I dressed as, on the second day... Spider-Man from Homecoming, and uh, me and my friend we did we reenacted the Civil War comic scene where Punisher is carrying Spider-Man. Cool. I still can't believe he lifted me. I guess I've, I have lost weight since, but still. Well, I'll give you um, a, a little hint here. If you want to uh, cosplay as a Spider-Man character and want to save money, here's what you do: you simply Wait until you're dead, and then you can go to any convention as Uncle Ben. <laughs> I've also cosplayed as Spider-Man Noir as well. You yeah. have? Yeah, I was about to say, Brandon's seen that. Nice. But I'm I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts in full on uh, Black Widow, Chris, so we can all sp- have a spoiler talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes, at some point, definitely. Yeah. But uh, I'll tell you what, since I haven't seen Black Widow, but to tie us over, I have finished watching all of Loki. Shall we touch on that for a moment? Uh, have you? I've, I've finished uh, I've, it. I'll say I've not seen anything of Loki. Uh, I guess we won't really talk about it. Because I, right, but... I don't have Disney Plus. Um, okay. Um, but I, guess... I don't mind you guys talking about it because I'm still sort of getting to grips with all the lore and everything. So I don't mind if you guys talk about it. Uh, well, we're gonna at least gonna say if we liked it or not. Yeah. Well, I for one, I I did very much like it. Uh, I was watching it with my folks, and they just looked at it, gone out. <laughs> they just did, did not understand what was going on. <laughs> and at first, I was wondering where it was gonna go. Uh, I kept up with it perfectly fine. I understood what was going on, but um. It's clearly open for series two, which they've already announced they're doing. Yeah, so, uh, I'll be I'll be surprised to see where it goes. Like, I really enjoyed Loki. I think, I think I I I was talking to a few people. I was talking to someone who was really into it, and I was like, I did feel a bit off with the final episode in some ways, but I think. Like many people, it was never meant to have a season two, and they kind of just split the season. I think vaguely, not split the season. Yeah. They haven't done season two, but I think they've cut it short to have a season two. Yeah, because it seems a bit odd that uh, both uh, One Division and Winter Soldier uh, only have one series. It's a few episodes. I think, but for what? From what I understand is uh, when even when season two wraps up, they're leaving it open for the um, Doctor Strange multiverse of madness. Yeah. Well, that's what um, One Division's going to go into next. So it's fair enough saying, oh, it's not they've not announced season two, but it's going to go into Doctor Strange two anyway. So that will be the continuation of that. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that it it's only going to be a one season thing. Mm-hmm. Like Falcon, maybe. 
What I will say for Loki is um, it's not as action packed as the other series have been. No, but I uh, I think it what it had in what it had else kind of didn't matter that it wasn't fully action packed. Yeah, I mean, you go if you're going to watch Loki, you're not going to watch him go around beating up people. You want you're there to watch him be a small meat git. Yeah, and that's mm. exactly what you get. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, great. I think we, I mentioned this the first time we spoke about Loki, but I really like Morpheus. Uh, uh, Morf- yeah, Morpheus? Yeah, yeah Morpheus too. I, don't know, I, 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 I thought he was a really fun character, and uh, I thought uh, Owen Wilson played him pretty well. Yeah, well, um, I will say, hats off. Favourite character in the series, though. Minus spoiler, I guess, but um, Alligator Loki. Where's his <laughs> series? I want that. <laughs> Give us that. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm interested to see where they go. I was since obviously watching Black Widow. I, uh, I've put all the films and TV shows into chronological order, and I've I looked at the Phase Four stuff, and I was like, well, well, after Endgame, the first thing is actually Loki. Mm. In in chronological order, so. At some point, when I decide to watch it all in that order, I'll after Endgame, I'll go straight into Loki. Well, here's the thing, Dan. You say in chronological order, but uh, with the events of Loki, um, who knows what the order is? You anymore? know, you can't know what I mean, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Without, I, you've not seen Endgame, have you, Brandon? No, yeah, I think. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm just ever, around about the age of old John Civil War. Yeah, I'm just I'm I've the... still got a couple before all that to watch. I've still got Winter Soldier to watch. Great film. I've still I've still got yeah. both Guardians of the Galaxy to watch. Fantastic. I've got Ant-Man to watch. Well, oh, I think I've yes. seen Ant-Man before. I think I watched it when I was at university. So, but obviously, I would just want to get myself back on track with it. And that's roughly where I am. I guess while we're on this subject, like how I actually got into the MCU was actually because of you, Chris. Oh, really? Yeah. And obviously, you just mentioned Winter Soldier, uh, and I, th- I think you, do you, you remember putting this status up on your Facebook all those years ago when it came out, where you said it reminded you of Metal Gear Solid Two? Possibly, <laughs> it was a few years ago. <laughs> you know which well, yeah, bit, memory. You know which bit yeah. in, and it, I remember reading reading that status, and I was like, I have to see this film, and from that moment, I fell in love with the MCU. So it's actually because of you, Chris. So you weren't. So when you went to watch it, you weren't actually paying attention to who the character was. You were just putting the uh, exclamation mark sound effects into everything. <laughs> <laughs> and what was that noise? <laughs> it's a box. <laughs> it's a cardboard box. So one of my Japanese animes. <laughs> uh, stuff. God, that's a complicated series, isn't it, Metal Gear? <laughs> I would. I, I've played all of them, and uh, I'd love to tell you the plot one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've not played a single one. I don't even know anything about the Metal Gear series. So, therefore, you probably know more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just more confused. I don't know if it's just me, but whenever I just hear Metal Gear, I just think of Snake. That's that's it. Well, yeah. he's, he's a character in the series, yes. I know, but all I can think of is Snake. Like that Snake. 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 That's all I know. I know nothing else about Metal Gear apart from that. It's a very iconic death moment. Oh, yeah. My my alarm uh, is the um, alert noise and music. So that's what I wake up to. That will wake you up. <laughs> so that's what I wake up to every morning. I love it and also hate it, but it's like, it's perfect for just trying to get me up because I'm like, I love this, but now it's getting really annoying. <laughs> but I, I'm a big fan of Metal Gear and I've, I'm sure we'll speak about it at some point. But yeah, yes, Chris, because of you, I got into the MCU because of the Metal Gear reference. Are you proud? Are you proud a little Chris? bit, <laughs> even though it was completely unintentional. Yes. I, I, I've just, <laughs> your, your shrine is just here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, another one. <laughs> oh. And what offerings are you making up to the shrine of Spanky today? <laughs> I've got a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was at the shrine of Spanky and think, oh. Is that going to be the new Hubarian in the next Dark Souls 
<laughs> Maybe. Just this random little pirate sat down. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I enjoyed Loki and I'm looking forward to seeing how it develops phase four because I think it's going to have big consequences on that. Yeah, so I know bugger all about Eternals or the. Um, I know the nothing. The ones are. I forget the name of. I've no actual. Shang Chi. Shang Chi. I know. If I try and pronounce it, I'll butcher yeah. it. I, I, I don't even think I said it right, but yeah. Yeah, I was trying not to pronounce it just in case <laughs> I offended everyone. <laughs> Sorry if I did. Uh, that's, that's. Have you seen Iron Man Three, Brandon? Um. Oh gosh, I remember the what happened in each of the Iron Mans. Iron Man three. I'm, I'm I'm unsure. I think I have seen Iron Man three. Well, it's got I the Mandarin. Think I have. That can mean any, that doesn't mean anything to me. Got you... Ben Kingsley in it. That also <laughs> means nothing to me. I don't really know people apart like actor names. Yeah. I just know. I just know. Um, it's got the yeah, it's got exploding people in it. <laughs> that narrows it down. Oh, God. And uh, he, and he goes off to a uh, remote. Uh, yeah. Town in the snow and has panic attacks. PTSD. I can't remember. I, I, from the sounds of it, he's not watched it. But I really uh, can't remember. But the uh, in uh, shall I just spoil spoil it? <laughs> I, uh, it's like a decade old now. Isn't yeah, it? Like, it's more for Brandon's sake. Should I not spoil it for him rather than uh, people listening? Like, uh, I guess are you bothered about a spoiler, Brandon? Not particularly. Well, there's a character in Iron Man 3 who it's revealed to be fake and that the actual real one is in the next Marvel film. Okay, that narrows it down to a lot. I'm trying not to actually say who it is, even though I've already mentioned them, but still. Yes, there was a bit of controversy when it came out because they, they, they portrayed this character and everyone was like, what the hell was that? That's not the guy from the comics. But apparently the uh, the real dealio is on its way. Like uh, after Iron Man Three came out, there was like a short which revealed the real one existed, and now finally they're appearing in the MCU. Right. <laughs> I, I know it's just going straight over you. It's head. literally going so far over my head. I'm just trying not to like, spoil just... it. <laughs> I'll get round to it. I'll get round to it eventually. Don't worry. No. But by the end of the year, I want to be up to date. How good is this, right? How how cocky do you have to be to deliberately or non undeliberately screw up your own movie to get people riled up and be that cocky and successful that you can just wreck on it later <laughs> and nobody's angry with it? I think it like I like I read something about Iron Man three and it's like as a Shane Black action movie it's fantastic but as a mcu film it just kind of betrays a lot of fans mm. well i didn't know the character really so i didn't get swept up in all that i, neither I, didn't I. I quite like my man free but... in fact if anything i quite like what they did when i heard all the people having the outcry of it, it was like really but i thought it was quite funny I think it has. A, I think the film has other problems, but I, I, I still, I still enjoy Iron Man Three. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, there's been a few, been a bit of a retro gamer here, hasn't there, Brandon? Yeah, don't know. What, don't know what we're talking about, but yes, I have been enjoying some PlayStation Two games that are on the PlayStation Four, and I honestly, I don't, have you guys ever heard of Dark Cloud or Dark Chronicles? Dark Chronicle, yes, and I've seen Dark Cloud so many times when I've walked into shops and be like, that just kind of looks like Link, but it's on the PlayStation 2. Effectively, yeah, I... I think it's, it's, it seems like, I think it was another game which was, which was in, in at, at its time, was intending to rival things like Final Fantasy and The Legend of Zelda, sort of. I... I had it when it came out the first time round, but I've never got that far into it. From what oh I understand, God. it was it was like a PS2 launch title, so it actually did quite well. At least Star Cloud. I, oh, it was it's so good because originally the only way I found out about it is back when I first got my PS2. You know the demo disc which came with the PS2. Mm-hmm. 
So Dark Cloud was a 20 minute demo on that. And that was the most I ever got out of it because trying to find that game originally in the UK was a mission. And then oh, it was it was everywhere back in the day. I couldn't see it because at the time I wasn't I couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, but then on the PS4, I went I was just going through the library and then I saw that Dark Cloud was there and I was like, oh, my God, Like I, I used to love that game, like the 20 minutes I used to play on it on the demo disc. So I got it. And I just fell in love with it. It was so, so fun. So, so difficult at times, but it was so fun. And then I found out after I did it, there was a sequel. I never knew it. And the sequel was called Dark Chronicles. And it takes Dark Cloud to a whole new level. Like, I'm at the moment in time, I'm 30 hours into it. And I'm not even halfway through the game yet. So it takes it above the clouds. Honestly, mate, um, it takes all the combat aspects from Dark Cloud brings it over it's a bit more clunky on dark chronicles a bit more stiff but it's got possibly one of the most unique um crafting systems i've seen in a game for a very very long time so for those of you who don't know the crafting system for dark chronicles is you have a camera and what you have to do you have to take pictures of items scattered throughout the world and that because and that then becomes an inspiration for a creep for a um for like a project or an invention and you have to, so you have to go around literally, I think in chapter one alone, like the first dungeon area, there's 120 objects you need to photo to do everything. And some of these photos are missable. Okay. Especially the ones that are called scoops. So if you, if you do miss out on those, you can't come back and get them. So it's very difficult to get some of these. And so fe- effectively, once you're then taking these pictures, there will then be like pieces of paper around the world which will say, oh, this will give your character Max an inspiration for an invention. You can't store these pieces of paper with the notes. You just need to memorize what you've seen. And then based on the pictures you've seen, you're then you're then able to see if you can craft that invention or not. And then once you do have that, you then need to farm the building materials to actually make said invention. And I thought that's out there for a PS2 game. That's bloody out there. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. That, maybe not the whole crafting... But the like the picture thing reminds me of um, Beyond Good and Evil. When did that come out? Like it's a PS2 game. Uh, I don't know if it was after or before. Be just after Dark Cloud, but before Dark Chronicle, I thought. I, I don't know. It's in the, the glory days of U- Ubisoft. <laughs> God. <laughs> no, yes. but you and Ubisoft were good. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, shall we very, if you're all about uh, games coming in, shall we very, very uh, quickly just say, products to Activision Blizzard. <laughs> a minute, for their allegations. Mm-hmm. What's that? Have you seen all that? Have you seen all that? Um, basically, uh, Activision Blizzard are being sued by the state of California for their horrendous behavior. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, uh, basically, um, harassment. Harassment for the roof, which is... Hey? Uh, no, that's no new thing, but uh, yeah, it's gone, gone to court. It's gone that bad. So it's been a whole load of we'll a- those. It's been a whole load of yeah. allegations with Blizzard for a long time. Yeah, but well, apparently uh, Ubisoft have been just as bad, but they've not been. I wouldn't say not caught, but uh, not I know, gone to court yet. <laughs> I know what you what you mean. Yeah, Bl- uh, not Blizzard. Ubisoft have had a lot of things. Like, didn't they have like? Was it in the Division 2 they had a few things and they just kind of overwrote it or I, I'm not sure what, I can't remember what they did but Yeah we won't go into too much detail obviously I can't think of the details off the top of my head anyway have. but um, yeah um, people are shit <laughs> and, um, the game industry love the games hate the game industry is pretty much my mantra at the minute mm. oh dear um, I'm not. I'm not looking forward to uh, the new EA remake of Dead Space because the way I see it, that's not EA's game. That's Visceral's game. Who they bought out and no laid off. Look all their ideas. So yeah. If on those games, does it even need a remake? It doesn't. I love that game so much. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just looking forward to Overwatch Two. That's all I care about. Oh, that's Vision mm. Blizzard. Oh, are <laughs> you not giving them any money? I'm just doing it just for the game itself, not for the company, but for the game. 
Wait till you can get it for free. Don't give them any money. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a bit mixed, Brandon. I I must admit, but I I guess I'm still kind of looking forward to it. But I'm I'm a bit mixed. I just can't believe it's taken me so long to actually first get into Overwatch. Like it, was, it wasn't until the first lockdown last year when I actually got it and played it, and I was like, "Oh my god, where has this been all my life?" <laughs> but I absolutely loved it. Mm. I don't know how it's taken me so long to get into it. I've not played it in a long time. I'll say the last time I think we played it, you were bashing around as Winston. Oh yeah, <laughs> you were absolutely going bonkers, man. <laughs> Winston, oh. and then you were just any time like you... a monkey. <laughs> I was like, you then just do the monkey dance just out of nowhere. <laughs> Isn't he an ape, not a monkey? Hmm? He an ape? No, he's a, he's an ape, not a monkey. He's, I think he's a gorilla. Yeah, he's an ape then. Yeah. yeah. Not a monkey. Yeah. Sorry, that, sorry, I don't I don't know much about Overwatch, but I know the three <laughs> apes and monkeys, damn it. And we're going to get it right. <laughs> I was saying, when you said EA or a monkey, I was just like, what? What's EA got to do with this? <laughs> yeah, same. Oh, EA are, EA are naughty monkeys. They should get in the bin. I, I guess I'm just this is gonna go completely back because we did really start on Dark Chron- Chronicle, but isn't there like two characters in it, Brandon? Yes. So in Dark Chronicles, there are two characters, but so you got Maximilian, who's the main character, who's an inventor, and then you have got Monica, who is the girl from the future. And even though you've got two characters, technically, you've got almost a dozen characters you can make. Because Maximilian can make a ride pod, which you can customize to have whatever parts you want, as in whatever legs it wants, whatever body it wants, whatever weapons it wants. And then you've got Monica, who has the ability to transform into monsters. So you can actually get a badge of a certain monster, Uh, and then Monica becomes that monster. I've seen a lot lot of gameplay of Dark Chronicles, and it looked really fun. It is something that... It's so good. Like, uh, I used to watch a whole load of video things i kind of stopped because they got really tedious and then one in one video he the guy was like you should get a trophy for beating all things and smoke in dark souls and i was just like you do it's maybe not directly for doing it but straight after you get two yeah and exactly it, and it infuriated me but um that guy uh in his videos he spoke about Dark Chronicles a lot, and it seems really interesting, that game. Honestly, it's it's quite cheap on the PlayStation Store. I Honestly, I recommend anyone out there who likes um, I think, what's the... Is, is it classified as a rogue game? Like a dungeon rogue explorer type game? You tell me. Because it's similar to, like, you know the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? <gasps> you know, like that uh, series where you've got, like, a, a randomly generated map and you got monsters, you have to get a gate key from a monster to try and find your way down to the next floor. It's, that, it's, yeah, it's a rogue, it's, isn't it? What? It's a, it's a ro- road light. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to remember how the classification of it, but yeah, oh, it, it's really, really cool. I'm going to completely break, break the fourth wall right here. <laughs> Sorry, right. guys. Uh, got, uh, my tattoo's just been put on Insta. <laughs> Wait, what? My, my tattoo by the tattoo artist has been put on Insta. Oh, so they just uploaded a picture of your tattoo onto Instagram yeah. as we speak. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh, nice. Because I've not, as you, I've not actually done that, and I, I wasn't planning on doing it. But that's well, cool. you said that now. You've got oh, to put that post up there. Haven't you? Oh no, I wasn't going to do it. I just, I'm, I was just like, if if someone sees it, whatever. So, okay. sorry for breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> I know, you oh. certainly broke the fourth wall, lost my train oh, of thought. Oh. Now I'm just thinking about eggs. Eggs. Uh, <laughs> Dark Chronicle. Dark Chronicle, yeah, but what was you saying about Dark Chronicle? You said about the guy who said about the achievement for... No, um, no, no. no. Trophy for you you ask him what type of game it is. You say oh, yeah, about it being a roguelike. Yeah, so it's that. It's um, It's got a world-building aspect to it as well, similar to Dark Cloud, where you have to find particles of a village and assemble it together to unlock criteria to advance the story which is which is really cool how you can just build your own build your own world like that it, it takes it takes dark cloud a, a massive step forward considering they're on the same generation of games so honestly if you like those sorts of games like please please tr- please try it even the weapon system in it is quite quite interesting how you, you have there's like um 
I think maybe 10 or 12 um, weapon stats and you have to synthesize um, items you pick up into stats for your weapons and you you can only synthesize them when your your weapon itself levels up. So your character doesn't level up; it's your weapons which level up. Okay. That's and cool. and you find items throughout the world which will increase your health or your defense. Yeah, there's a whole. I, I can't think of any right now, but it's just a whole load of games where I'd be like, it's like that, 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 and that. Yeah. Mm. But I, well, I, I can't believe like I completely missed out on the Dark Cloud Dark, Dark Chronicles for so long. I could si- seriously say there's some of the biggest hidden gems of the ps2 era so much yeah see what i what i remember from dark cloud i remember not liking about it and so i didn't get very far in it because it had um your weapons degrade and you basically got a stamina system which i didn't like but i think with my new sort of dark souls riddle brain (laughs) i think i could probably cope with that yeah it's probably really similar how in dark souls i think more so in dark souls 2 you know how fast your weapons degrade in Dark Souls 2 oh compared to gosh. Dark Souls 1? Yes, I, yes. I'd, you say, I'd say your weapons will degrade it. roughly that far, but but you can upgrade your weapons so they degrade slower. And the game does give you plenty of items to restore the durability of your weapons. And if the weapons do break, in Dark Cloud it's more punishing because the weapon fully breaks. But in Dark Chronicles, when your weapon breaks, it just lowers the, your weapon's experience. Okay, that's mm. better. So it's, it's a bit more forgiving in Dark Chronicles, but it's a lot harder to upgrade the weapons in Dark Chronicles compared to Dark Cloud. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely see the... Now that you're familiarised with Dark Souls... It's funny how they all start with Dark, isn't it? Yeah, um, it so, is. Yeah, yeah. So dark, if, you're that, if you're that familiar with that aspect from Dark Souls, then you'd like it on Dark Cloud. Mm. Oh. Interesting. And also, I need to say as well... The music, I did not expect the music <laughs> in the Dark series to be quite as nice as what it is. I had a feeling you were about to mention the music. I'll say, because in particular, from Dark Cloud, the second boss tune is so bloody catchy. So, so catchy. I, I guess while, while we're actually on video game music, <laughs> <laughs> we we forgot to mention about the Donkey Kong music. And a few of oh these. yes, the Donkey Kong yes, music is amazing. Was... I've not heard yes. any of it. Oh, right, so Brandon, so I um after we, I, f- I got after... an... no, sorry, <laughs> let's try again. <laughs> right. right, so basically, basically how it, <laughs> how, it started, how, how this started right, is I got an N sixty four emulator up and running, and I got Donkey Kong sixty four up and running, okay. and I put up a post on Facebook because if you don't know the beginning of the game starts off with what they call the DK rap. Starts off with a full song. And I posted it on Facebook and was like, here we go. Now I've put that up. I have I have this in my head and I'm watching it. And now just so you've seen this image, this has put this song in your head now, isn't it? You're welcome. So uh and then it's it's dawned on me and Dan, because he commented that uh none of us mentioned Donkey Kong the the soundtracks in the couple of episodes ago when we were on about music. So Brandon, after we finish recording Go on to YouTube and type in <laughs> Stick a Brush Symphony Donkey Kong Country Stick a 2. Brush Symphony. From Donkey Kong Country 2. That might be the greatest Donkey Kong song ever made. Mm-hmm. And then put on the DK rap and put it on a loop for about three hours. And then put on the Do- Donkey Kong Country opening theme. Yeah. <laughs> That'll kill an afternoon. I mean, he's just writing it down. That's why he's so quiet. <laughs> I know, yeah, I've just typed it down just so I know as soon as we finish recording, I can just play it. Uh, Stick Bros. <laughs> Symphony Stick is amazing. Uh, I played Smash Bros. a while back uh, online, and in the lobbies, you can change the music, and I changed it to Stick Bros. Symphony. So it's just waiting in the lobby with that playing, and it was great. <laughs> we also didn't mention the, the Witcher soundtracks. I don't know if. You've heard them. I've only briefly played The Witcher 3. I didn't get too far in it. Neither. I, I, I don't know, because obviously we, I come from Dark... But Dark Souls 3 at the time was my big game, and the and the controls of Dark Souls 3 felt so smooth. I've not played much of The Witcher 3, but I remember hearing the music being really good. And also yeah, Halo. Halo. 
if I think of Halo, the main songs I can think of is the main song and the, you know, like when it starts to build up, like, yeah, that, that's all I can really think of from Halo. It's funny saying that. I did download the Halo Master Chief collection. I keep meaning to. Because I've. Yeah, because all I've ever played is three ODST Wars and four. I've not actually played Halo One and Two. I've only played Halo Two. Oh, Halo Three was so good. Like my like my days in like year ten, eleven, and sixth form, which is like Halo at the time. It's just Halo Three and Modern Warfare Two. They oh. were so good times. I would go to like my cousins, and we would just play a multiplayer on Halo Two. Do like only a. Uh... Was it energy, energy source? source. Yep. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, it was oh, the good old days. I know there were so good days back yeah. then. Yeah. Our oh, scenes were going to reminisce on time. So, Chris, when you were like 16, 17, 18, what were the like the big thick like the big games that you were playing? Ooh. Oh blimey! If I can remember that far back, uh, yeah. let's see. <laughs> I, I, I guess we've not really. Yeah. If people don't know, Chris is like nearly. 10 years older than well, no, no, not 10 years older, but it's like a good seven, six, seven, eight. I don't know, I don't know the age gap between uh, okay, Zuma. Can't oh. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you? Yeah, uh, I suppose when I was like 18, that I was playing stuff on like the PS2, so I probably would have been playing stuff like Dark Cloud and whatnot the first time, yeah. But uh, when I was when I'm 18, the game that jumps to mind. I don't think it was when I was even 18. Uh, yeah, it must have been. Uh, oddly enough, and I don't know why this jumps in my mind. Actually, I know exactly why, but I won't say why. Uh, it's um, the GameCube. I was playing Bomberman Generation. Oh, oh my God, that is such a good Interesting. game. Yeah. yeah. I was so, playing that when I was 13, 14, I think. Yeah, G- GameCube was like the stuff I was playing when I was like 18. Oh, my but favorite console. It, that was, yeah. Uh, but even then, that wasn't new at the time. But that's, no. that's the kind of stuff I was playing, like Smash Brothers Melee. Yeah. Uh, Twilight Princess. Mm. Yeah. Probably the Metroid Prime games as well. Well, you mentioned but... Zelda. How... I did mention Zelda. Yeah. And, um, and what, because what... we uh, we mentioned the cloud, what's in the cloud? What, what... Is it Sky? What, what came out recently? Uh, well, we all know the answer to that. Black Widow. Black Widow came out recently. Yeah, yeah, it did. <laughs> now, well, so, well, also, so did Skyward Sword. Yeah. I, I guess I'm not very far. I, well, I've got it on Wii and I'm like halfway through the game. But on the Switch, I'm like an hour in. So I'm not even left Skyloft. All oh, right, okay. I, I've, I've hardly played it. And I have my reasons. And uh, I'll tell you about them after this. But um, how how far are you so far? So, full disclosure, I never had it on the Wii. I've never played it before. Um, so I know the quality of life changes, which sound amazing, to be fair. Like uh, getting the companion to shut the hell up. Sounds like a bonus. <laughs> and um, the, the lack of motion control was just fantastic. Uh, it kind of took me a little while to get used to the sword controls, but yeah. after a couple of hours, it just seemed to click fine. Yeah. But um, I'd say I'm about... 12, 13 hours in. Okay. I have spent a lot of time wandering around going from place yeah. to place. So that's how I play the game. I take my time. I'm not... Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Whereabouts are you then? Uh, so I have done... Let me think. I've not play, actually played it for a couple of days. Um, I have done like the first three main dungeons. Um, uh... Fought the Imprison once. And now I'm... I've just got the um like the not the Zora scale but the equivalent to it like being able to dive on the water. Okay, so you've got that far. From where I am on the Wii, I think mm. you're a dungeon behind. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I'm on the Wii, I've just got to the the next see uh, the the dungeon after the one you're about to do. Mhm. I think I, I, it's been a long time. Like I don't really remember a lot. I I I do and I don't. It's I I feel I I really enjoyed playing it on the Wii all the years ago. But I don't. It's one of those games where, like I need to go back to this. I need to go back to this. Here's Skyward Sword HD. Oh, do should I go back <laughs> to it or should I restart it now? I don't know. 
Mm. Well, I went to go and get Skyward Sword just like a couple of years ago. Um, because I thought it's the only Zelda I've not done. I really need to do it. So I had a look to see how much I could get it for with like the Wii Motion Plus, and they wanted a ludicrous amount for it. So I was like, nope, fuck that. I don't want it that much. Thank you. <laughs> mm. So uh, I, I'm glad this came out. I know when they did the Nintendo Direct a few months ago and this was announced and everyone just sort of like rolled their eyes. I was one of the few people that goes, oh, I've not actually played that one. That when, when they did that Nintendo Direct, I was like, this needs to have a new port. I was like, I, I was the game I actually really wanted them to breathe new life in. I kind of wanted a bit more, but I at least wanted Skyward Sword to get some uh, spotlight and it did and I was I was happy that it did. I just remember seeing a uh, a cosplayer post straight after, like, but it should have been Twilight Princess, and I was it. Re- it really annoyed me because <laughs> I was like, Twilight Princess doesn't need d- didn't need it. It's been on the GameCube, Wii, and Wii U. Mhm. Well, that and um, the problem with Skyward Sword being all motion controlled yeah. is um, it it late makes it far less accessible for anyone with like, yeah. uh, physical disabilities or anything. Yeah. So right. I'm glad they've ported it so more yeah. people can actually play the damn thing. Same. Uh, have you played it, Brandon, or not? Or... The only Legend of Zelda games I've played is The Legend of Zelda 1, The Legend of Zelda 2, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker. Okay, so no. So you've, you've not played A Link to the Past? Really? I've not played A Link to the Past. I've literally, As you guys were talking about the remake, I just literally went onto Google and just typed in a list of Legend of Zelda games. So, I was just going to literally pose a question to you guys. Of the list of the Legend of Zelda games, what would you say are the most essential ones to play? Link to the Past. It's my favourite. And I will die on that hill. (laughs) Would you say it's worth getting the the Switch uh, version of it? It's 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 on the Switch Online. Yeah, it's on the Switch Online SNES library. Is it? Uh, yeah. Yes. A link to the past is, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, no, wait. No, I have yeah. played A Link to the Past. I think. It's the one on the Super it... Nintendo. I must have yeah. done. For me, it's hands down the best one. It's it's all killer, no filler. Oh, crap. No, I, ha- I don't think I have played it. Let me have a look at it. No, I haven't well, played it. Okay. I'm going to say, if you haven't, or even if you have, play it again. It's one of the games I like pick up like, probably like once a year just it, to have a quick it blast. It is great. On. It is such a good yeah. game. And if... I did it live on stream like last week. And yeah, yep, cool. you really pissed me off when you did that. Because... <laughs> oh, really? Why? Yeah, because you did. You made the ice dungeon look so easy, and I'm I've not got past that dungeon. I was like, did you struggle there by any chance? <sighs> and you just uh... you just flew through it, and I was like, I love the fact that you flew, you've gone through it, but I hate the fact that you have because it's really made me look. <laughs> so bad at, at playing that game <laughs> to be fair i have been playing it since it came out that is true <laughs> but um but yeah it, that is my least favorite dungeon yeah we say like, flying flying through it it still took like 45 minutes yeah because <laughs> it's huge it's like, it's like nine levels <laughs> yeah i think for me if you're not playing it as zelda for me it's ocarina or wind waker i think they're probably like the, the two easiest to just get into, unless you can play both of them on GameCube, as a, you can have them as a whole, both as a pack. But I, if I was to add a third, probably Link to the Past. I think they're mm-hmm. the three best. But then, I know. Uh, <laughs> no, what were you I was, saying? I was going to say I know a lot of people, like majority, would probably say like Ocarina of Time is the best one. And it's, yeah, it's good, but it's not my go-to one. For me, I think it's more the story. For the, Because of the story, it's my favourite. Mm. But it's Everyone's different. I, I kind of... Sometimes I'm, I'm like... I want to kind of be that guy and just be like, Majora's Mask is the best. But I think... For what it's like, the perfect sequel to Ocarina of Time, but it really is. But at the same time, it's because of what it is. Is also why I don't like it as much as I feel I want to. 
Because you're constantly okay. comparing it to Ocarina. No, it's because of the time mechanic. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the time mechanic. That's... It gets old really fast. Yeah. Like that, if... I Because of that, it's amazing. But also because of that, it's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did beat it back in the day, but I think... Even, I picked it up a couple of weeks ago to have a quick blast on it. And I can't see myself playing for it again. Now nah, I've done it once. I, I can't be bothered with all this. It's one and done. Mm. But yeah. But I, I so I'm I with Skyward Sword. I got I'm thinking about halfway on the Wii, on the Switch. I'm just about to leave Skylar, so I'm not that far. But I know what you mean with the motion controls on the Switch. They do feel a lot more fluent. I I feel like I can do the different. Uh, slices would uh, far easier than what I remember. Yeah, it takes a little getting used to, but um, I've, I'm kind of doing it now without thinking about it. Yeah. Like the, the first hour or two, I was just like, oh, I'm trying to flip this way. Because <laughs> um, I'll tell you what I found like the, the hardest part so far is like the first proper boss fight after the first dungeon. Yeah. Because that's all about manipulating your sword. It's like, I'm quite massive this year. I'm finding this quite difficult. Like, why can't I hit you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think if I picked it up and did it again now, I'd do it flawlessly. Mm. Yeah. Have you done Ancient Christ- Kristen? Kristen? Or I... That Ancient dungeon? System. Yeah. Have you done that dungeon? No, not, not that one yet, no. Oh, was... that must be your next dungeon then. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. I, that... know, I, know, it's got, I know it's got one of the uh, like fan favourite bosses in it. Yeah. Uh, is it Coloctus? Yeah. People say how good yeah. that boss is, but I haven't got to it yet. Yeah, I think that's your next dungeon. Sweet, I look forward to that. Spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone knows. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I guess there is one final thing I want to talk about. <laughs> Go for it. And it's why I've not been playing much to with Sword. I've been playing a lot is of that. Is that, that just happen to be a Pokemon game by any chance? It might be. Is it Pokemon uh, Unite? It might be. Oh, that one. <laughs> I was going to say, we've got two polar people here who have probably got very different opinions on, on Pokemon Unite. And I feel like I'm going to be standing here as a referee. <laughs> right. uh, Dan, I think you should go first because I think you're going to have yeah. a lot to say than I have. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I do quite like MOBAs. I do kind of like League. If League wasn't as toxic, I'd probably play it a lot more. I have played a lot of Heroes of the Storm. Because I know the characters quite well because of Warcraft and Overwatch, so I, I have I am very familiar with MOBAs. And when they announced it, I was quite interested to see what a Pokemon version of a MOBA would be. And I'll be honest, I'm playing it at least uh, since it's come out. I played it for at least an hour to two hours every day. Oh see yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, really enjoying it and I'm kind of really good at it as well which is really <laughs> weird um, my go to characters or Pokemon at the moment are Snorlax who is thick and <laughs> uh, nine, <laughs> Ninetales or oh, Alolan Ninetales that's the Ice and Fairy type uh, I know that adding in Blastoise and Gardevoir at some point. But it's got an interesting roster of Pokemon. There was no Gen 2 Mons that you can play as. Uh, None? Nope. Can't play as any, well, any, any Gen that's 2. That's just another reason for me to uh, not like it. <laughs> uh, but you do have, except for Blastoise, who's going to be added, you basically have the Kanto starters. Uh, you've also got Pikachu. There's a, it's got Cinderace from Pokemon Sword and Shield. You got Greninja, you got see Snorlax, Slowbro. It's got Wigglytuff, which is really random, but it's kind of interesting. It's got it's got an interesting roster. Um, like I said, I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm re- kind of really good at it. Uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, and obviously, it's free, but as I'm sure, why Chris doesn't like it. That I think I can see where the pay-to-win aspects do come into it, but I'm not 
going to put any money into it. I'm having a lot of fun with it being free. I was, I was just going to say, Chris, like, I can understand your points about how it's pay to win. But you just got to think about it is a free game and they've got to make an income somehow. And don't get me wrong, but for some, like, because I play a lot of gacha games, so like, I'm really huge on Summoner's War. I'm getting, I'm getting somewhat competitive on that and I stream it. I think for gacha games, if they want to make them, or even like MOBA games, if they want to make it fair, I think they should only make. Uh, cosmetic items the only monetizable part of a game to make it fair for all players because that way everyone has a really even ground like if you've got like a system where you have to pay like your own money to be able to unlock you know like super premium gear or like premium units then it does become quite unfair in that aspect but i mean if it's anything cosmetic like character skins or customization stuff then i'm i'm for that for the most part is that i think it's the held items you get where it kind of blurs it where for the most part you can easily level them up quite quickly but then obviously the things you need to upgrade them will cost more and more and more obviously you can just easily just spend money add them in and upgrade them quicker um but i've nearly like maxed out one of them and I don't see the point in putting money in. I know there's a battle pass, so yeah, you can get cosmetics for your carrot, for your Pokemon, and if you want a lot of the Pokemon uh, to play as, yeah, you can just put money in and instantly buy them all, but you get, like you do in most MOBAs, you get free Pokemon to play as for a limited time, and then you, if you get more money, gold, you can buy them. Like in game gold, you can buy them, which you get for winning matches. So, I've, like I said, I bought Snorlax and I bought uh, Elder Goss, which is a Gen 8 Pokemon, which I only mm. bought because it was a, a healer. And I thought, maybe I should have a healer. But they've given, they're giving out a lot of free Pokemon to play as already. Like, uh, there's a challenge to get crustal which i've nearly done so tomorrow as long as i do it do the challenge i'll get crustal and i've just got crustal from just playing the game and they've got like a uh, daily rewards and if you go through the whole thing you get free pokemon for free as long as you sign in on those days yeah a lot of a lot of mobile gacha games do that same mechanic of events and like login rewards which you know yeah. if, if for free to play like that's, that's that's good. That's a positive thing to have, but having to separate the whales from the free to play is yeah, that's kind of you know rough. I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say it's ten out of ten. No, definitely not. Like I think yeah, maybe a like a six or a seven if I'm giving it out of ten. But I'm having a lot of fun, and I think that's the thing. I'm having I'm. I'm doing well. I feel like I'm a team player and I'm having a lot of fun. And it's all free. And I kind of can't really complain. Yeah, but, you can't knock it if it's free. But I'm not I'm not gonna I from what Chris is probably gonna say in a sec, I he has his reasons and they are completely valid as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well then, uh obviously you are a hundred percent correct about the uh MOBA stuff because I'm not a fan of that system at all. Um, I, I don't believe they are free to play games. They're purely free to start, and then if you really want to get involved, that's when the money comes in. Oh yeah, yeah free to play, but, uh, pay to win. Yeah, exactly. Can't stand any of that. No, nope, keep it away from me. Um, so, but anyway, uh, when it comes to Pokemon Unite, I did download it uh, when it, as soon as it came out. Oh, did you? Uh, I yeah, yeah. Like as soon as the scene was announced, uh, downloaded it straight away. Oh. Um, I wanted to check it out. Uh, when I started playing it, it was like, oh, oh, it's more of a sort of sporting type basketball, football type hybrid thing. I was like, oh, this is this isn't what I wanted. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect because I didn't see uh, anything beforehand. I just picked it up, going in completely blind. I was like, oh, 
okay, what do I actually do? And the game explains to you, and I was like, okay, do that. It's like, oh, that's pretty simplistic. Oh, what's that? Just like every other mobile game ever, all your skills have a cooldown. Of course they do. Yeah. Anyway, uh, play, play through the tutorial, played a couple of games, and then what really put me off is like, pretty much as soon as you finish with the tutorial, it smacks you in the face like, here's the battle pass. It's like, oh, I see. This is where you want the money from me now. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Um, I'm just going to nip this in the bud and just delete it <laughs> straight away. Because uh, it ain't getting my money. <laughs> if, if Pokemon want my money, just release another Pokemon game. I bought Snap. I paid full price for that. I have no problem with spending money on that. <laughs> is Snap any good? Snap is good, yeah. Um, if you've played the original, um, it plays a lot like that. Okay. But it's got a hell of a lot more content. Like, okay. tons more. I haven't played. finished it. I never played original Snap, so I don't know. Yeah. The original Snap's a fun game, but um, you can beat it in like a couple of hours. It's mm. not very long at all. Okay. It's basically you on like a couple of um, you're, you're basically on rails, yeah. and I think there's six levels, and pretty much as soon as you're like you've done one course, you can almost immediately go on to the next one. You okay. do have to replay a couple of stages because you unlock a few abilities. Like uh, to manipulate the environment, so you can like discover like hidden routes, and that'll in turn take you to like an, the last couple of levels. Mm. Uh, yeah, but you can do it in a couple of hours. But the the new Pokemon Snap is much much bigger, probably to its detriment because a lot of people who've been playing it and going for completion are getting really sick of it because it's like a lot of padding out. Mm. So so okay, so as you might have gathered, you take photos of Pokemon. That's fine. But in the original, you just take a photo of a Pokemon. At the end, you like hand in to like, the professor which one you think is like your favourite, or which one you think is the best one. So say it's like you've taken six photos of Pidgeys. You can only hand in one photo of Pidgey, so you hand in which one's going to be the best. Mm. Okay. Now, you do that in the new Pokemon Snap, but it's also got a star system on. And you can get rated for like one to four stars, but you have to do that for every single Pokemon. So you have to like say, even if you got a fantastic snap of Pidgey, you'd have to turn in like a deliberately crap one just so you can also get the one star. And, and then the on, two star and the three star. The new Pokemon <laughs> snap. Yeah, so you have okay. to do this for every single Pokemon. So essentially you have to do um take a photo of them at least four times. <laughs> wow. One being crap. Crap to like great, um, and if you're going for completion, that's an absolute nightmare. If you play it casually, it's great, and if you want to go for the high scores, and yeah, go for it. All the better for you. But um, I don't recommend going for completion because uh, you, well, you'll get your money's worth out of it, I guess, <laughs> but you won't be doing anything else for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yes, I do recommend it though. It is a fun game. Uh, if you want to pick up and play, just like do do a level or two, then put it down again, come back to it later. Mm. Totally can. That's probably the best way to do it. By the way, on the topic of Pokemon games, I just had a really random thought. <laughs> What's your guys' thoughts on Pokemon Ranger? Never played it. Uh, hmm? I've got it on my shelf, staring at me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I I quite liked it. From what I remember, what uh, do you I've do? only played it the once. Yeah, I played it once, and I've I did finish it, so I must have liked it enough to finish it. What do you do on but it? It's uh, it's kind of like a sort of top-down RPG, and it but instead of capturing Pokemon in like the normal way, you use like the stylus to like draw rings around it. It's um a bit odd. That's pretty much all I remember, to be honest. Yeah, the and the harder it is to capture the Pokemon, the more rings you need to draw around consecutively around them to capture them. Oh, okay. Yeah, and and it's like it's not really a battle mechanic. You've just got to basically capture the Pokemon, and the Pokemon's capable of escaping capture or breaking capture. Yeah, it basically are like attacks to like break the loops that you're drawing around it. So you gotta like time it correctly, if I remember, or just do it quickly. Yeah, it was, it was very <laughs> awkward, but I can't remember much of it. I just thought like it's just one of these Pokemon games which they came up with, you know, a new idea, mm. but then they made the sequel for the. I think it was also on the DS rather than the 3DS. And then since then, they've not really paid any thought to it. 
Mm. Hang on one second. <laughs> okay, I, lit I literally have the cartridge in my hand now. <laughs> Not quick. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so it's on the shelf. I've got all the Pokemon stuff close to my heart. Uh, let's see. Catch it on, it says in big letters. <laughs> and then lots of small pictures, which don't really show you what the gameplay is like at all. But uh, it does let you know that this game is not compatible with any other Pokemon games. Not even Shield and Shield, which came out like a decade later. Which, you know, that's a bit of lack of foresight on their part, isn't it? <laughs> mm. <laughs> but I paid £20 for it, apparently. Which is from 30 I was like, I think I paid £20 for it as well at the mm. time, because I think I was just like, oh, Pokemon game, I'll grab it. Yeah, I'm one of these weird people that don't take the stickers off, unless I'm going to trade it in. Oh, I always do. I'll tell you what is great about it, though. It's got an actual manual. Like, oh. proper full one. Oh, I think pages. mine still has the manual. Oh, well. yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. How many pages? Oh, 56 pages. It's got doodles. <laughs> All of those <laughs> manuals. Pictures. It's got pictures. Oh. All right, that's my bedtime reading. Done. I'm going to read that. Well, reading instructions of a Pokemon Ranger. Yeah. Yeah. Either that, or take, either that or take it into the bathroom and read it. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <sighs> But uh, what are your feelings on Pokemon Mystery Dungeon since we're on about that? I really liked uh, the first Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, the second Pokemon mm. Mystery Dungeon. I wasn't too keen on Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Infinity because they went more three-dimensional with it and the world just seemed a lot smaller. I haven't played the remake, the one that's in that um, ink, or that paper and ink pencil art style. I've not played that, so I can't really give an opinion on that, but I did really, really enjoy uh, Red and Blue and then what was it Dark and Time? Couldn't tell you. Uh, the only one I've got physically is Blue Rescue Team on the DS. Mm. Um, I know I've played a different one as well, but I don't have it, so I've probably played it on an emulator. Yeah, because the, the ones are, there's the Red and Blue, which is, you know, Pokemon's usual way of having the same game, but branding it with a different colour. Yeah, and then there was time, explorers of time, and explorers of dark, which this is this is one thing I actually found this really really cheeky on Pokemon's behalf. If you got explorers of time and explorers of dark, I think explorers of time was the only one you can get Celebi on. Like literally, the games were exactly the same, but explorers of time was, but I think yeah, the only difference is explorers of time you can get Celebi. That's it. So it's not like the normal ones where there's like eleven different ones. It's just one. Yeah, it's it's just literally just just one difference. I thought that's just so cheeky. That really is. Balls to that. But again, it's a it's a roguelike style game, and I think that's my first yeah. time ever playing a roguelike game was the um, Red and Blue Mystery Dungeons. Yes. Well, here's something that you may not know: the Mystery Dungeon moniker type of game wasn't started by Pokemon. It's been done loads of times before. So, uh, notable ones you might know is a. Uh, Chocobo from Final Fantasy. That did a Mystery Dungeon game. Played yeah, I know. I didn't play that one. I, I kept seeing I was like, I kind of want to pick it up just because it's a Mystery Dungeon game. But yeah. at the same time, I'm like, I don't want it to be like Mystery Dungeon Infinity, where yeah, it's too three-dimensional. Well, they are all at heart like the same type of game. Yeah, you yeah. had the Chocobo one. Uh, you had Dragon Quest do it as well. Yes. Um, And then I believe there's another couple of... Uh, in Japan only franchises that did it as well, but I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you who the originator of is it without a Google search. Who did like the Mystery Dungeon formula first? But I want to say it was Dragon Quest. I may be wrong on that. Yeah. Just have a look. If I just type in Mystery Dungeon, it says it's a series of roguelike video games by Chunsoft. I have never played any of the Mystery Dungeons. So, which one would you recommend to me to play first? I'd say play the two originals. So, play either red or blue, but it doesn't matter which one of the two, because they're literally exactly the same. And then play Explorers of Time or Explorers of Dark. Did, did they, I wouldn't bother with the third one. Did they remake red and blue on the Switch? Yeah, they made it into they made it into like a pencil art style. True. I'm not sure how close of a remake it is, though, because I've not played it, but I... I do want to give it a go, just see what it's like. But I definitely, but I think 
maybe from a bias standpoint because of the originality and just how smoothly it plays, I'd probably stick with the DS version. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I have. It'd be, it, I think it is something I've been looking for for a while, but it's not like... If it's there, I'll probably buy it, but if it's not, well, I, I can't buy it. Yeah. I'm not like... I'm not going to eBay it. I'm like, if I go into a place and it's there, I might buy it, depending on the price. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna break the fourth wall now. I'm gonna have a look online just to see how much you can get it. I'm I'm guessing it's not gonna be more than like a couple quid. Really? Uh, oh, like... Yeah, you can you can get the blue and red rescue team for like twelve quid. Oh okay. I didn't know how rare it was because yeah. some of the DS Pokemon games are bloody expensive. Yeah, so the three DS one Gates to Infinity is the same price as the Explorers of Time and Explorers of Darkness. Okay. Damn. Wait, what? There's another one. Another. Oh, there's another Mystery Dungeon one, which is on the Switch. Oh, the, wait, no, that is the remake one, the Rescue Team DX. Yeah. Yeah, I know they've had a fair few, so... Yeah, I, I, don't, know, I, sort of yeah, I don't know. I want to give it a go, but I'm not going to pay, like, 30 quid for no, it. I want to... Yeah. But I, I highly know... recommend 12 quid. Just pick up, like, either Red or Blue and just give it a go. Yeah. Okay. See... It would be hard for me to justify for buying like a newer version of like Mystery Dungeon because you know at heart it's just going to play like the originals. Yeah, it's and the originals are actually good. Game. Yeah. And by the way, Chris, to answer your question about the original Mystery Dungeon game, it's a game called Tornico no Daibuken, and it's from okay. 1993. And there we are then. It's a quite a long time ago. Mm. Yeah, but the Chocobo Dungeons were quite early on in the Mystery Dungeon series. There we are. It's a mystery. Well, I'll say it was a mystery, but it's not anymore. <laughs> a mystery machine. Yeah. So that's yeah. What's the first ever roguelike game? I've, start I've started a loophole now. Oh, I'm no. trying to find like, the oh, first ever. It's the first roguelike I sort of played. I suppose it was that. <laughs> uh, Pokemon one. But I'm sure I've played games like that before. But it just didn't like have the moniker of roguelike beforehand. It's like a no, geometer sort of came like... It comes from 1993, so it possibly could have been that game I mentioned. But then there's like text-based roguelike games, which are like from the 80s. Really? I'm, I'm looking at this game, my shelf, right? I'm thinking, I suppose technically this could be a roguelike. Tetris. <laughs> you start a new run every time. It's random what pieces you get, and when you die, you lose all progress and start again. Is that not a roguelike? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Look how far this hole goes. <laughs> Early roguelike games were developed to be text-based user interfaces. Yeah, so things like Zork or The Hobbit. Yeah, I can't... Just doing like a quick look, I can't really see. Mm. But some of the first ones are games like Pedit 5, which is possibly, which is considered to be the first dungeon crawler game. Mm. And then there's other ones like Dungeons & Dragons D&D or Thank, all from like the late 70s. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, even a bit before my time, though. <laughs> just, just a titch. You were spring chicken. <laughs> yes. You know what chickens lay? Eggs. Eggs. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I, I appear to have walked into last week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, right, we've been mentioning video game music, which is a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah. Oh, time's convoluted. Oh, it's Loki all over. Oh, yeah. Uh, so. Guys, is there anything else you'd like to discuss this week? I think anything I've discussed everything I've been up to for the past two weeks. I think I'm relatively up to date. Nothing of any note. Oh, wait, no, there is something. There actually is something I can mention. Right. So, uh, so yesterday and Saturday and Sunday, spoilers for when we were recording this, the last two days, I rewatched two films from a, uh, a series of... It was a t originally a TV show, and then they did three films, and a fourth one's coming out this year. Is this what I think it is? What do you think it is? Is it the Violet Evergarden film by any chance? No. <laughs> oh, okay, then it's not what I think it's done. <laughs> That's completely not what I'm about to mention. Oh I was saying, because you were saying that you've watched some no. films which are for like TV, which are from a series, I'm just like, no, this is not anime, Violet Brandon. Evergarden. This is not anime. Oh no, this is what? not anime. 
Well, it's not Debbie Does Dallas, so I'm not sure what it could be. But I, I rewatched the first two Jackass films. Ah, oh, oh. mate, yeah, Jackass Forever's coming out soon. Yeah. Oh, I want to see that. I am so looking forward to that. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm planning getting prepared for that film, so I rewatched Jackass 1, Jackass 2, and I actually did watch Jackass 2.5. And then you've got three and Jackass 3D. Yeah, and I've I've never watched Bad Grandpa, so I'm gonna watch that as well. And I'm gonna oh, if you're not, oh yeah, get get the unrated one. It's yeah. I'm gonna yeah, watch. You the, have to watch Bad Grandpa. I'm gonna That's watch the fantastic. series as well. Oh, I, the I made, series is so good. I, I made my mum watch Bad Grandpa, and she absolutely pissed herself laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know you if either of you have seen the trailer for Jackass Forever. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. looks it looks fun. You know, it it I, looks so fun. I was I'm never really, like, really looking forward to it. I was never like really caught up in the craze of Jackass, um, but I did like the movies, and I did like the Dirty Sanchez movie as well. I've not that. actually seen that. So, have you not? Have you seen the Dirty Sanchez uh, TV series yeah, as well? Yeah, I've seen the, the TV show, but not I've not seen the film. Yeah, but but that said, um, when I I seen the trailer for the fourth this new jackass announced it just like came out the blue and i saw it i was like you know what i think after what this the shitty years we've, we've had this is going to be fantastic it's like i think this is exactly what we need yeah <laughs> back to normal it's like yeah subtle restrictions lets us i don't know throw ourselves at nail boards or something <laughs> right i oh, got one where uh they uh, they're pedaling and they get smacked by a hand in the trailer. Yeah, <laughs> like that brings back memories of Jackass Three with Johnny yeah. Knoxville's hand and the soup. Uh, okay. All right. All right. The question I I need to ask. So if you can remember off the top of your heads, I want to, I want two categories. I want one what you think is the best I knew, Jackass. I knew this was coming. And secondly, I want the one that makes you cringe the most. Like, oh no. Uh... Can I can't think? really remember the, the stuff in the TV show because it's been so long. I, I, the the first two films are quite fresh. So I, I'm, I'm just gonna have a think. I don't know. I wow. think uh, I can't. I can't really think of which ones at the moment. Well, the one that made me laugh the most. Like, it's not even that dangerous a stunt, but God, it made me laugh. It was then um. I can't remember who did it. I think it was Johnny Knoxville. Where it, it, he's in like the old man makeup, and he's going down the uh, very, very uh, sloping uh, steep yeah. street. Oh, like, in the mobility scooter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like screaming his lungs out. Because it just like comes out of nowhere, and he did it like several times, and I kissed myself laughing every time. I thought that was fantastic. I can't really think of the ones which maybe stand out the most for me. I mean, I can I can say the ones that made me cringe the most is anything that's maybe involving Dave England. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know Dave England is a bit hit and miss. But that, uh, how does like that, that? Surely he's got Crohn's or something. <laughs> like the amount of crap that comes out of him. Uh... <laughs> oh dear. But well... I'd probably say the one which has probably made me laugh the most. Oh, it's possibly either got me Johnny Knoxville or Bam doing something, or maybe even Ryan Dunn. Got like, rest in peace, Ryan. But yeah, really, I know oh. I can't. Yeah, I can't tell that like, one example of one which has made me howl. Uh, the the one that I um, I really don't like, I think makes me like, oh no, oh no, no, don't do that. Um, it's dead simple, and you'll probably make you cringe just thinking of it. Um, paper cuts. Oh, yeah. oh yes! Oh the, yes! Oh. Like, oh no! No! Oh, just a thought. No, no, yeah, no, that's no, that's the cringer. You. I think yeah, for okay. me, I think it's anything when uh, I think it's mostly Chris Pontius that make, makes me go <laughs> like, oh no, is when he does anything with it with his cock. And like, no, I, I don't. I want... completely forgot about that. But as soon as you said his name, I knew exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's like because the second film starts off where it's like it's the puppet show, and it's a he's wrapped the mouse, his, yeah, and then the snake, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, no! I'm gonna have to rewatch them. I haven't seen them in such a long time. Well, uh, 
Oh wait, no, you don't have Netflix. Never mind. <laughs> no. I was saying Netflix um, have got I, I, the only way, things which I wish someone did is you know the TV series of Jackass is that available anywhere? Uh, you can buy it on Amazon. Oh, you can actually buy the series. Yeah. Because I know they've because I picked up a DVD of I think it's Jackass Uncut, but it's it's like a sections of the TV series rather than a se- a series itself. I oh, like a best of kind of. Thing. Yeah. But I'd like, I'd like to be able to get hold of, you know, the three seasons of it. Or yeah, two seasons, however many it is. They're all on um, Amazon, but obviously you've got to buy them. And the films uh, 1, 2, 2.5 and 3.5 are on Netflix right now. Funny enough, by the time this episode's out, they're going to be they're gonna be off Netflix. So really? You, yeah. Uh, two uh, go- will be gone on Saturday. And... I think another two will be gone next month. Why are they getting rid of them? Yeah, Netflix. Yeah, Amazon does the same. Yeah. I've noticed that uh, since I've had Amazon, um, they titles don't seem to stay on there very long. I seem no. to like notice like things come on there and go, oh, I'll, I'll get around to watching that, and it's only on for like a couple of weeks, and then it's gone again. Yeah. They don't stay on there for very long at all. Yeah. Streaming services are weird. Just, mm. yeah. don't know if you've read about what they're doing with Demon Slayer Season 2, Brandon. Oh, it's coming out later on in this year, but only on Funimation. Yep. But isn't Funimation now also owned by Sony, who also own Crunchyroll? I don't know, but from the sounds of it, it Season 2 is just going to be on Funimation, not Crunchyroll. That's, well, obviously, yeah, that's a bit... I can't remember. Unfair. It's what they did with um, Love is War. What, only on Crunchyroll? No, no, season one was on Crunchyroll, season two wasn't. Oh, yeah. Like, it makes no sense. Like, all these people who buy licenses for for some of the stuff. It just makes it... Because I thought, I thought this was going to be one of the advantages of the, of the Sony buying out Crunchyroll was that now Sony would own both the streaming services, so it make so there'd be no competition, and they can merge it all together. So you have like everything available to you. Yeah. But no, it seems like they're still keeping them as two separate streaming platforms. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. No. Like if I go on Crunchyroll and get Kaguya, it's only got season one. So. I mean, I I, feel, I really really do feel like. Anime still needs to step up in how it approaches the Western market. Oh, yeah. Because, like, there's so many, like, Bakuto Test. That's not on Crunchyroll. Is that on Funimation? I don't know. I'm just on Funimation right now. Because, like, there's uh... so many series out there which which just don't make sense. Like, look at South Park as another example. You've only got a couple series of it on Netflix, but then Amazon have got all of it. Yep. So, I'm just, I'm just really confused at how does it get worked out with who yeah it it does my head in somewhat because i i do want to support the anime industry so like that's why like i've got grudge roll but i can't have three streaming services like i've got netflix i've got crunch roll and i also need funimation like yeah. i'm not i'm not gonna be paying like 30 pounds a month for streaming services because it, it it just gets to the point where it's just like having a whole different tv license yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, so you, so you, gone. Both, uh, as I said, both seasons of Kaguya are on Funimation. So, if whereas Crunchyroll only has season one. So yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, sense. Yeah. Stupid. I gotta, it's, it, it's kind of weird, isn't it? How you just had so many TV channels and then. Netflix came along and like changed it all, but now there's so many different streaming services. It's basically just like changing the channel all over again. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, what I did is I had Netflix for I did it for like ten years or something getting on. Uh, but I got rid of it last year because um, I picked up like Disney Plus and then I picked up Amazon as well. So I thought, you know, what? I'm just gonna knock Netflix on the head because I've watched like everything I wanted to at that point. There's a few more stuff come on now. Like I haven't seen like the last series of Castlevania. I want to see Better Call Saul and Stranger Things when they come out. But got, I'll uh, just wait. Resident um, Evil. I'll, 
Oh, yeah, I'd love I've, to. I've got a confession <laughs> to make. Actually, now they mention that, Chris. Mm. Uh, this weekend, I started Castlevania. Oh yeah, and what do you think? I, I'm enjoying it. I've only seen. I was not. I was not expecting it to be like Van Helsing. I thought it was going to be something completely different. I've only seen season one. I've seen season. I, I finished season two. Like I binged it. Okay. Mm. Series three is great as well. Apparently, um, season what, four is really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's. It's really nice to have something based on a video game property and actually have something good come out of it. It's like, what? You mean the series is good as well? What yeah, because some some anime which I've seen which are based off games, they did not get executed very well at all. That's pretty much anything based on a game. It's like, it's the <laughs> Dan, you, you know one game. in particular. Dan, you know one in particular, don't you? Which one's that? We all do. Angels of Death. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't know if um, the actual the person who recommended me is ever going to listen to this episode, but. That is categorically the worst anime I've ever seen. I Even I watched worse than Conception. I've not seen that. But I, I'll, play, I, I'll, I'll pay you not to see it. I, 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 <laughs> Angels of Death is so bad. Um, oh my gosh! All I, I can remember from that is just Jack screaming in that high pitched oh, squeal. It's it just so oh ear piercing. Like I remember when. When I told them, like they're like, "Oh, what did you give the? What score did you give it on uh, my anime list?" And they were like, "Do you give it a seven? Give it a nine, ten? And I was like, "No, no, 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 no!" Just going lower and lower, and it was like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe you gave it this low of a score." I was like, "Yeah, because it's that bad." And then yeah. I met, and then. I saw my one of my friends, and they were, they had a, a they got like um one of those loot boxes, and they got an Angels of Death T shirt. Oh, my like... condolences! <laughs> and so they what <laughs> they started watching it because <laughs> because of the T shirt because it's like well I'm wearing the merch, I may as well watch the anime because I've got a T shirt of it. I don't know if it's good or not. And then they turned to me and said it's not very good, and I was like, yeah. It isn't. If you say that's the worst anime you've ever seen, have you never seen Nyon Nico Sugar Girls? I don't know. I, I, I say it's, I say it's the worst anime. It's up there as one of the worst anime. I don't know if right. it, it is. Go 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 watch Nyon Nico Sugar Girls. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I, I, I've got better things to watch. If I Google it, will I get cursed? Possibly, but it's. But not in the way you're thinking. <laughs> Nyan, Nico. Oh, here we go. Oh, well, I, I, can, Nico, I can filter Nico. my anime list so I can t- it can tell me what's the lowest score. Oh, Why does that look like a really budget Elfin Lied? <laughs> oh, Angels, Angels of Death is fourth on my my worst. So I've got, my worst is actually Inferno Cop. And then... <laughs> oh my gosh! Should I even say what's second? Why oh. is, it? is it fairy tale? No, fairy tales. I think I gave fairy tale five or six. I think I gave it a six, but I've bumped it down to five. Um, no, uh, second is having children as my second worst. <laughs> oh really? Then it's bikini warriors. I've seen that one. <laughs> then it's Bikini Warriors. I know you didn't like it either. Yeah, I, I've never struggled so much to watch an etchy so much in my life. <laughs> and, and then it's Angels of Death. So <laughs> they're, they're, my, they're my lowest four anime on my anime list, which is completely opposite. Is my high? What's my highest? My highest uh, is obviously Mob Psycho. Is yeah, it's Mob Psycho. Uh, a place further than the universe. Hunter, Hunter, a silent voice. Berserk, fruits basket, and oh, uh, what's it? Spirit of the Way and Laputa Castle in the Sky. Okay, I'm just having a look on my anime list for the. Oh my god! <laughs> what have you done? Okay, so I'm just looking on my anime list to look at the lowest rated anime of all time. I'm going to exclude OVAs and I'm going to exclude movies. And the lowest rated anime is X-Arm. Well, I don't know what that is. It's a very 
How did you find dodgy that? CG one? How did you find and that? It, you just you just go into the anime database and just swap it how it's rated by score. I was going to say, did you two have your own list that you created? Like, there's an anime. Is like, it, am I the only one there? It might, it's a website where you can add all your anime. So I've, I don't know if how accurate Brandon's is, but mine is completely accurate with what I've watched. So I mine still needs up to date. So I need to do a couple more streams to get myself back up to date. But mine is completely correct with how many I've watched, which is yeah. I looked at it and I'm like, that's over ten years worth. Yeah, I've, I I need to stream um, updating my anime list again because when I first tried to stream it, it was in the middle of a heat wave, and my friend said, "Brandon, you look like you just streamed like you streamed for an hour, but it look, but it, at the end of it, it looked like you were streaming for four hours because just how hot and drained I was from the heat." <laughs> yeah, I've definitely got to re-update oh, my anime list. I'm just looking through these. I'm just like. I'm looking through like the ones that are rated four or lower, and I'm just like, what the heck are these? Volcano Pico is rated four point two nine. Oh, that's what you want to watch, don't? Isn't it, Brandon? Uh, I'll pass on that. Have <laughs> you seen that Fruit ba- Basket? The final is number five on a uh, Mal at currently. I know it dropped from his full Metal Alchemist at the top. Yeah, of course it is. Why? Why wouldn't it be? I've not seen it, so I don't know. You've not seen it? Even I've seen that. That's great. <laughs> and with that bombshell... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before we sit here for the rest of the night, I don't feel this. No, we're, we're not. We're not. No, no. <laughs> but I've just started I started like a mini project. I'm just like, I need to try and find what's the lowest rated anime I've watched. Oh, here's an idea. If we... Ah, Conception. There it is. It is the lowest <laughs> one I've watched at 4.6.2. Uh, 4.62, sorry. And then oh, Promise Neverland season two straight after. <laughs> here's an idea, lads. Oh, put, put this on the back burner. Uh, oh, if, the, if we ever do a recording session and I'm away on holiday, this can be your episode. You and you two go through your anime list. I think, yeah, yeah, I think... I'll, I'll, yeah, I need to stream it again as well. But it'd be nice to do a podcast episode of just ripping each other. <laughs> oh, what is, uh, our, our anime tastes. Oh dear. Yeah. What do a special? Oh, yeah, I, I'd be up for that for a special. Guys, would you... Be, right, audience people watching this, if you'd be up for that special, let us know, please. Just Brandon and I ripping each other's mail lists. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that actually sounds f- hype as fuck. I know, it sounds really cool. I think we should definitely do that as a special. Uh, yeah, when I'm, when I'm away. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll, before we go, I'll, I'll set up like a, a little plushie with like my headset on, sat in front of my laptop. Oh, so... <laughs> There is one more thing I'd like to discuss before we wrap up for today, gentlemen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would like to give a game recommendation. Oh. Uh, and it's oh, yes. one I had my eye, I had my eye on for a while, but it came onto Game Pass this last week. Um, if you have ever played the old like GameCube and N64 games of Paper Mario or Mario the Thousand Year Door, and really like that style of gameplay. Then go out and check out the game Bug Fables, which has come out. It's basically that, but you play as a trio of bugs, and it's fantastic. The storyline is like really not, odd. the storyline is not too deep. Like um, they do have like dialogue scenes, but they're like short and sweet, and it's mostly gameplay. But um, it is an RPG, but um, it does have a leveling system. But it's um, it's really like bare bones, like you. Your stats aren't like going to like the hundreds of thousands or anything like that. You're literally like doing three damage, receiving two damage. So it's really damn there. But I I'm having a blast with it. I've in the few days I've had it, I've put about sixteen hours of gameplay into it. It's amazing. I was playing Skyward Sword, but I haven't played it for the last few days because I've been playing Book Fables. I'm and I want to get it done before it comes off Game Pass. It I'm literally uh, adding it to my basket on uh, adding it to my wish list on Steam. Excellent! It is <laughs> such a good game. Um, so at the beginning of the game, you can like, you can toggle it on or off during gameplay. Uh, whether you can do it on the hard mode or easy mode. I've stuck on the hard mode because uh, I'm a sucker for punishment. But Ooh. the game rewards you for doing so. It like gives you um, if you beat like a boss in the hard mode rather than like, in the regular mode, it will give you like uh, basically an upgrade. 
that you can use throughout the rest of the game. So I'm incentivized to carry on playing it in hard mode. Oh my gosh! Yeah. That, um, look, I'm looking at the the trailer that's playing on Steam, and it looks really nice. Oh. Yeah, the music's the music's great. The music's all chilled out and uh, a little more bombastic when it needs to be. But it, it uses so many like weird instruments. I I know there's like accordions in there. I can hear banjo in places. I'm not surprised. Um, but it but it all it all fits. Um, what they do to the universe, because I say you are bugs, and you can see how they've made houses like out of um, bigger things like like sandcastle buckets and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, um, highly highly recommended. Uh, I haven't finished it because I imagine it's still quite a big game. But so far, what I've played, I've absolutely loved every second of it. But yeah, book of fables, check it out. Book of fables. I guess uh, that probably about does it. Hi guys, it's been a pleasure. Um, there is something I, I will just add. If um, anyone who's listening wants us to answer a question that you might have, be it would be nice. Uh, you can send it to us. You can do like a voice message. Uh, if you go, on, if you're listening on Spotify, uh, if you look on the description, it will have a you can, it will have a, a link to send a voice message. So you can send us a voice message. We could even put it into the episode. Yeah, so make sure to follow us on all our social medias. Like you can follow me at twitch.tv slash Cybaka. And you can follow Chris at twitch.tv slash Spanky Rambles. And really try to make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Facebook, which I'm guessing Daniel put in the description of this podcast as well. Yeah. I will. And we're also on Anchor anyway. But I will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's, that wraps it up. Yep. As I said, thank you guys. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And thank you to everyone else who listened to us ramble for nearly two hours again. Don't know why you do it. <laughs> no, not two hours. <laughs> oh, what a time of reality. Yeah, but uh, by all means, guys, uh, thank you very much for listening. Now, go and play Book Fables. Go Let's play Dark it. Cloud and Dark Chronicles. That too. And if you're mad, come join me on Pokemon Unite. <laughs> 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 no. Be safe. We'll see you next time. Bye. Catch you. Bye.